By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at the final episode of the Farmstead series. So the Farmstead is a tournament held in Mirlo and it's a core set only tournament, which means players could only play with cards from Alpha, Beta, Unlimited and Revised. So for this edition, Revised was added to the mix, which is quite interesting because you can, for example, play Kurt Ape and our players today, they know that they can play Kurt Ape because they've decided to play with this beautiful creature. Both players are playing with a full place that we've got Boss who's kind of on a zoo deck with uh, green, red, and blue. And he's playing against uh, Elon, and he's on a um, deck also with Kurt Apes, green and red with four forces of nature. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to see that in action. He's also splashed a little bit of black, you know, he's the mind twist is in there and cards like that. But before I start with the deck deck, I would just like to point out that as always, you can also go straight to the action, you can go straight to the games. How can you do that? Simple, check the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there and that will take you straight to the action. Also, if you would like to know more about the Farmstead, the specific rules, where you can find the Farmstead Facebook page, you can all find that information in the description below. So in other words, if you've got any questions, first check the description and of course you can always leave a comment. Let me know. Talking about that stuff, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Please remember to subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell. And now we're going to start with the deck decks and I'm going to start with the deck of Bus. And here we see the deck of Bus. So let's take a look. Uh, I've called it a zoo deck because there are just a lot of smaller creatures in this deck that you can play really quickly. So it's it's definitely an aggro deck. So he's gonna go out with, you know, Kurt Apes, Elvish Archers, and of course the uh, the Script Sprites, the one one Flyers, and don't underestimate flying. It's great evasion in old school. But what we see here as well is we don't see Surrender Pafrit because he's also, he's also playing with a little bit of blue. Instead, he's chosen to go for Atok, three Atoks in his deck. And I think that's a very good decision because there's so many cards here that you can play so well with Atok. Let's maybe start with the two Winter Orbs there at the top. So Winter Orb is an artifact for two, and it reads you can only untap one land during your untap step, right? So um, why does this work so well in this deck? Well, for obvious reasons, the, the average casting cost of this deck is very, very low. Look at those creatures, they're all one or two casting cost creatures. And you know, Burn is cheap to cast. I think Psionic Blast and Time Twister are the most expensive cards casting cost wise in this deck. So, you know, Winter Orb will will be a problem maybe for the opponent, but it definitely will not be a problem for boss. So it's a great inclusion. And the nice thing of Winter Orb is maybe you're in a situation where you need the mana, or maybe you're in, I mean, of Atok is that maybe you're in a situation where you don't need the mana or your opponent, it's not affecting the board much. You can always feed it to your Atok and it makes your Atok bigger. It gives it plus two, plus two, which is, which is something, you know, for your opponent to kind of keep in mind. Oh yeah, there's that orb he can still sack. Talking about that, we also see four Black Vices. And Black Vices is this card, it's, it can be absolutely ki a killer card. Also great in combination with the Winter Orb, but there are also moments in the game where it can be a dead card. And when you've got an Atok, it's never a dead card. Because worst case scenario, it's a plus two, plus two for one colorless mana, right? So that is not a problem at all. And talking about that, we see the five Moxen, we see the Black Lotus, all that is great food for the Atok. It's expensive food, but the Atok loves it, right? So, I mean, this deck really fits the three Atoks. And um, talking about the Moxen, by the way, this deck is fully powered. We see a Time Twister, Time Walk, Ancestral Recall, Black Lotus, all the Moxen. So it is kind of insane. Um, moving forward on that kind of land deny strategy with Winter Orb, we see that he's also added three Ankh of Mishra. So Ankh of Mishra is an artifact for two that uh, reads, whenever you play a land, you take two damage. So that also goes for Boss, but of course also for his opponent. Now Boss is playing super aggressive, right? Four Bolts, three Psyblast, three Giant Gross, very cheap creatures. So his idea is I'm gonna win the game early. So I don't mind taking some damage in the process. I don't care, you know, because I'm going to win it early anyway, as long as what I play also hurts my opponent or hurts my opponent more than it hurts me. And I think with Ankh of Mishra, that's definitely the case. And by the way, with this deck, he doesn't need a lot of land anyway. If he's got like two land, three lands there, 
and a mox or something, he's set. He doesn't have to play out any more lands, which is kind of nice because it means that Armag Armageddon decks are going to have a really tough time playing against this. And we are seeing more and more Armageddon decks lately. Um, okay, this is the deck of Boss. I think, Boss, you've got a really strong deck. It looks really tough to beat. And um, now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Elon. Let's take a look. And here we see the deck of Elon. And um, it's interesting. I think, by the way, it's probably Elon in Dutch. But I'm so in my <laughs> English that I'm just saying Elon. So sorry for that, Elon, uh, for your pronunciation of your name. Uh, when we're looking at this deck, so we're seeing again, it's red and green base, like just like Boss. But... There's also power in here, but much less than boss. And he's chosen to really stick to the red and green. He's got a little bit of a black splash. I like to call it the boring splash. It's an understandable splash though. It's Demonic Tutor and Mind Twist. Very good cards, only one black each to cast. And if you've got a deck, uh, you know, with Birds of Paradise anyway, and you get access to the right dual lands, it's quite easy to create your mana base so that you, you know, so that you can play uh, those black spells and also this is a format of course because it's core set only you're not going to run into a blood moon and that's huge right even though blood moon wouldn't be that devastating for this deck because of the lanora elves and the birds and the fact that he's playing red as well but still the fact that you don't have to keep a possible blood moon in the back of your mind i think it gives a lot of brewing freedom to a lot of players and you can go you know what i can just put some more duels in some more duels in it, it doesn't matter so that's kind of nice. Um, and when we look at this deck, I really see this this green red aggro strategy, right? So both of these decks have really an aggro uh, vibe to them. We see the four Lanawar Elves and the two Birds of Paradise. So that's six Mana Dorks. So that means the chance of him hitting a Mana Dork turn one is really high. He also plays with Wild Grove. So that's even more land acceleration. Maybe really nice, a nice thing to point out in this deck, uh, maybe for a zoom into Wild Grove. So Wild Grove is an enchant land. So you put it on the land and when you tap the land, it gives you an extra green mana. So if you would tap a red mana, uh, you would also get a green mana when Wild Grove is enchanted on it. Or if it's a forest, you would get, you know, two green mana instead of one. So it's really nice. And there's a little combo in this deck, which I find really cool. It's Lay Druid and Wild Grove. So Lay Druid is a card for one green and two, it's a one, one. You can tap it to untap target land. And then, of course, Elon can tap the, can choose to untap the land with the Wild Grove enchanted on it. Tap that again, and then he gets two mana back, right? So with one land, he can now create possibly four mana if he's got the land enchanted with Wild Grove and if he has a Lay Druid in play. I think that would be really cool. And if you could kind of use that mana to cast a Force of Nature, that would be even cooler. Talking about that Force of Nature, you know, Force of Nature 8-8 eight, eight, Trampler, it's huge, right? Um, but you have to pay four forests in your upkeep or else it does eight damage to you, right? So that can sometimes be a problem, keeping up enough uh, lands, you know, to pay for that cost. But if you've got Wild Growth, all the mana dorks and that Lay Druid, it's probably going to be quite easy to pay the mana cost. And at the same time, it's going to be quite easy for uh, for Elon to kind of cast that force of nature. And I'm so looking forward to that moment. I'm hoping it's in this game where he gets to cast a force of nature early, he attacks with it, and he can play a berserk on it, right? That is the dream of this deck. That is what this deck is built for. That is what this deck wants to do. And that is what I want to see. So Elon, I've got high hopes of your deck, man. I've got I've got high expectations. I think when I'm looking at both of these decks, I think, you know, Boss, because of the blue power, he's the favorite, but your deck is also very, very dangerous, and I just hope that you get to attack with Force of Nature. Just uh, in case you don't know what Berserk does, Berserk is uh, an interrupt, right? You can um, play it on an attacking creature, and then the power of the attacking creature doubles and also gets trampled, and at the end of your turn, uh, it's destroyed. Right, so it just goes completely nuts and then it dies at the end of turn. I don't know, maybe a heart attack or something, I have no idea. But anyway, so you double the power of the force of nature. So then it would become a 16-8 trampler. How cool is that? So I've got my hopes up, I've got my fingers crossed. Uh, we've seen both of these decks. Now let's go and see the force of nature in action. Let's go to the games. Game number one is about to start. We see Elon still shuffling up. So he's the player with the Force of Nature, the red-green Force of Nature aggro deck. And on the left side, we see Boss, who's playing with a Zoo deck, 
Also a lot of red green in his deck and some blue, including the power cards. We see a Kurt Ape there in the hand of Elon. He's putting a card on the bottom. It looks like Boss is on the play here, starting with a Black Vice. So that means at least only two damage for Elon because he took that mulligan. So it's gonna drop to 18, playing a Kurt Ape. Taiga Kurt Ape, it's classic, I love it. So it's a two, three. And let's see what Boss can do here. Playing a Volcanic Island also has a Kurt Ape in hand. But, oh, he's got two Kurt Apes. <laughs> it's, it's Kurt Ape crazy. Well, I've, I've, it's been a while since I've seen so many Kurt Apes on the board. He can actually double block, choosing not to. Probably worried about a possible Giant Grove. There is a Birds of Paradise here and a Chaos Orb and a Pass. So if both players are really off to the races here. Here we see an attack for four. That means Elon's going to drop to 14. And we see an Elfish Archer. 2-1 first strike. That's not going to do much against the Kurt Ape. Now I wonder if Elon's going to keep the Kurt Ape home. I think he kind of has to. Of course it depends what else is in his hand. He also has that Chaos Orb. But do you really want to flip on those small creatures? Boss did miss a land drop, by the way, but his deck just doesn't need a lot of land. Looks like they're discussing a few options. Elon a little bit in the tank here, thinking about what to do. Looking at his hand again, he's on 14. If he attacks, he can deal two more damage, but then he's kind of open for the counterattack by Boss. It all depends what's in his hand. So he is attacking, so I'm expecting him to have another creature. We see Boss dropping to 16, and he's passing turn. Are there some lightning bolts in his hand? This is risky. I also see an Atok in the hand of Boss. First, he's going to go to combat, attacking for 6 here in response. We see a flip on the Taiga. Ooh, it's a miss flip. That is a miss. That is unfortunate here for Elon. I wonder what he's going to do. He's going to chump one. Giant Grove it. Okay, so not chumping it at all. And he's going to take four. He's going to go down to ten. And there we see an Atok. Let's see. What can he do? That Atok, again, is kind of a problem. And this is why I like Atok in a deck with Vices. That Vice of Boss is basically doing nothing. It only dealt two damage. That's it. But it's not a waste of space because he's playing with Atok. Here we see a Mind Twist taking care of the hand of Boss. That is a really good move from Elon, but he's on 10 though. Ooh, not attacking with the Kurt Ape, that's interesting. So he wants to keep the Kurt Ape as a blocker, it seems, attacking here. And this is kind of tough because if Elon blocks, he knows that Bus is going to sack the Vice, so he just takes the damage, going to go down to 9. That means he's only 3 bolts away. There is a Soul Ring, I believe there is a Regrowth in hand of Bus, by the way, really good card. Boss has some mana issues. Luckily for him, his deck doesn't need, need a lot of mana. Here we see the block. Sack, Giant Grove. Ooh, Bolt. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta love these battles, right? Oh man, so many trickery in these decks. The end of the day, the Vice is gone. Another Atog. Atog just not as good without any fuel. And there we see a Wild Grove and a Pass. Wild Grove is not what you want to see right now. There's an Ang of Mishra. Don't think it's going to do much. Oh, although, of course, it's fuel for the Atok. Going to block, sack, Giant Grove. Wow, it's good that uh, Elon has that Giant Grove here. And it's really nice to see that basically Boss is using those artifacts now as a plus two, plus two uh, kind of Giant Grove for the Atok. And there's a full attack after that bolt on the Kurt Ape. And this is Problem Town. Okay, at least there's one bolt. Going to take three damage. Going to go down to five. Where are your forces of nature, Elon? We need your forces of nature. Gotta chump this one. Gonna go to four. Regrove. Bolt. Oh, it's looking really bad. And that's it. That's it. Yeah, because next turn he can attack. And then he can deal the final uh, damage with that lightning bolt. Ooh, I kind of felt after that mind twist that maybe Elon could take over the game. But I think it was just top decking, uh, you know, lands and wild groves and such. Very interesting game, very quick game, and I'm expecting the second game to be quick as well. So both these players are going to sideboard, and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. Bus on the play, starting with the Taiga. No Kurt Ape this time. I do believe I see a force of nature in his hand there on the right side. 
There we see Volcanic Island, Mox Emerald. Ooh, turn one, Surrender Befreed. And that Surrender Befreed came in from the sideboard. Of course, really good against all those weenie creatures of Elon. And there is a Chaos Orb. So you can definitely use that orb to flip against the Surrender. But the Surrender can deal a nice three points of damage first. He's going to drop to 17. There's an Ancestral Recall. Oh, this is looking already looking so bad for Elon. There's a Curd Ape. And there's another Serendip in hand as well. So even if he flips and hits the Serendip, it's not even, you know, he's not out of the danger zone. Looking at his hand, not playing anything. A Curd Ape would have been nice just to block the Curd Ape of Boss. And that Ancestral Recall has given him so much fuel. So he's going to attack. I'm expecting a flip here. He's going to flip. Okay, you're going to hit this Elon. Go for it. Yes. Okay, this time it's a hit. That's good to see. So only two points. Okay, there's a bolt. And ooh, Blue Elemental Blast coming in from the sideboard. He's going to go to 15. Plays another Surrendip. This is so unfortunate for Elon. Of course, he was hoping to get rid of the Kurd, rid of the Surrendip, and then maybe have a little bit of luck. It does look like he's got a Fireball in hand. Needs more mana, though. Cannot find a Mana Dork. Remember, he's playing two Birds of Paradise, four elf, Lunar Elves. It's very unfortunate. L using the Berserk now as removal, which I guess it's understandable, but it doesn't mean he takes six damage plus two from the Kurt. It's going to drop to seven. Oh, man. Time Walk. This is one of the shortest games on the channel. This is not good. Elon needs a miracle. He's on five. He's on three. And there's a giant. And it's done. It is done. Oh, no. All those beautiful forces of nature. Oh, man. Oh, my goodness. Elon, I wish I, wish I had recorded more matches with your deck. Because your deck is so incredibly cool. But it is what it is. Uh, and maybe it's nice to know this is the last um, uh, episode from the Farmstead because, you know, I had to go back to Amsterdam. This tournament was held all the way in Mierlo. It's quite a drive from Amsterdam. So, uh, so we had to leave before the top eight, actually. But um, I can tell you that Boss, the player on the left with his zoo deck, won the tournament. So Boss, congratulations on winning. So this, I'll put his deck on the screen. This is the winning deck of the Farmstead Cup. And uh, I just want to thank Robbie and Roy as well. They organized this cup for the first time ever. And it's really interesting to play with these core sets and to, you know, add revise to the mix. So yeah, it's nice. And I believe you're planning on a second one next year as well. So I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, thank you for having me over. Thank you for Boss and Elon for playing on the stream. And um, yeah, again, congratulations to Boss for winning uh, the tournament, man. It's great. Congratulations. Um, that's it. This is the video for now. Thank you very much for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. Please don't forget to subscribe if you're new and ring that bell. All that helps. Also, liking the video helps a lot. Leaving a comment, sharing this on your socials. They're all really easy ways to help me and to help Timmy Talks grow as a channel. There's one other thing that you can do and that is become a patron of Timmy Talks and you can do that by becoming, uh, by clicking on the info card that's appearing right now. The cool thing is you can already support the channel starting with a dollar. So just one dollar a month and um, you do get something back for that. So you're supporting the channel, you're supporting me as a content maker, uh, making more content, but also when you become a Patreon, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. Um, you get, uh, you can join in the Timmy Talks events because I, I kind of organize like tournaments and little online things to thank my channel members and pages for their support. So of course, when you are a patron, you can join those if you want to. And this is really cool. Your name will be in the end scroll. So at the end of every video, there's an end scroll with all the names of the people that support me. And I'm very grateful for all that support. So if you want to get your name up there, click on that info card, check out the Timmy Talks Patreon page. You know what? Let's uh, let's have a look at all those beautiful names. Let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at the amazing, the fantastic, the wunderbar channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks.
Think it is, think it is, Zumba Kazik.